Welcome to today's Maintaining a Balance video. This video will be looking at one particular dot point, analyze and present information from secondary sources to report on progress in the production of artificial blood and use available evidence to propose reasons why such research is needed. So this video is just a little bit of a introduction to what artificial blood is, uh, give you an idea of a couple of the different um, things that are currently being done in the production of artificial blood, what are some of the advantages of artificial blood, and uh, just basically to get your uh, mind thinking about what artificial blood is and why we need it before you do your own research. So the term artificial blood can be quite misleading. As we know from our research so far in the Maintaining a Balance topic, blood has many different functions, while artificial blood or blood substitutes are only designed to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide. So they're currently obviously still working towards a better product that is able to carry out more of the functions of real blood. However, at this stage, all they're really able to do is to increase the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Artificial bloods are not involved in clotting and coagulation, so uh, the stopping of bleeding through the uh, combination of platelets like in our normal blood and is not involved in the immune response. Uh, so we are unable at the moment to mimic the behavior of white blood cells. We're just able to mimic the behavior of red blood cells by being able to create these substitutes that can carry oxygen. There are several using artificial blood or blood substitutes. Uh, so as opposed to using normal blood, using artificial blood is safe and disease-free. Uh, obviously, it's made in, uh, in a laboratory, so there's no outside influence, there's no natural um, pathogens within the blood, unlike human blood, which can be infected even though they go through quite an extensive streaming, uh, not streaming, sorry, uh, screening process as people come to donate blood. Uh, also free of allergens, so people who have allergic, to react allergic reactions to certain different things don't need to worry as um, there are none of these allergens in the artificial blood. Uh, the blood does not need to be refrigerated for storage, unlike normal donated blood, and can be kept for long periods of time. So as we heard during our blood donations uh, talk and in the research that we did around donated blood, Whole blood donations can only um, be kept for 42 days and need to be kept refrigerated at all times. So artificial blood has the advantage as it can be traveled over long distances because it doesn't require this freezing or this um, refrigeration for storage and obviously can be kept for much longer periods of time so it doesn't go off and uh, it doesn't go to waste. One of the big key things with artificial blood is there's universal acceptance by all blood groups. So with a normal blood donation, you have to type match, uh, say, uh, the individuals to make sure that they're able to accept the blood donation. However, with uh, artificial blood, there's no need for that time wastage, especially in situations of emergency where patients require the blood quickly. They can just be given the artificial blood and there's no risk of rejection. And lastly, probably the most important reason why we need artificial blood is it's um, able to be readily available in large supplies. So at the moment, there is definitely a shortage of people donating blood everywhere around the world. In the in, uh, little images at the bottom there, we can see that only one in three Australians, which equates to 3%, will donate blood each year. So you'll recall that one donation uh, can help save three lives. So if only 30, uh, one in three, sorry, one in 30 people are donating, that's um, not a huge amount of donations that we're getting uh, throughout the whole of Australia, considering in our other image here um, from the Red Cross, they have stated that Australia needs more than 27,000 donations every week. And this number is only increasing with our ageing population. So there's going to be greater demand on uh, the supply of blood as the population gets older. Also things like natural disasters 
and the unfortunate events of uh, war and violence obviously mean that we need more of these blood supplies and without people donating, uh, artificial blood provides us with a alternative. So there are a few types of um, artificial blood at the moment and there are two basic types of oxygen carriers. So one is based on perfluorocarbons and the other one is based on uh, hemoglobin. So perfluorocarbons such as oxycyte and fluorovent easily dissolve uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide and can transport these gases to tissues and the lungs respectively. So basically these chemicals uh, are injected into the blood and as we can see in the image there, uh, the size of the perfluorocarbon in relation to the red blood cells is they're quite small, but they're able to dissolve the oxygen and carbon dioxide, take them wherever they're needed. They're combined with other materials such as lipids, uh, so fats, to form an emulsion which can be injected into the patient. So obviously we're not going to be injecting just these little ball-shaped structures, even though they are extremely small. They're combined with uh, fats in order to be able to be introduced to the body. So some uses of these include uh, patients who are undergoing surgery, people who have suffered some kind of trauma, and the oxygenation of tumours during radiation and chemotherapy. So basically that helps uh, the healing process of cancer patients. Having more oxygen in the area uh, helps with um, the degradation of the tumours. So the haemoglobin-based oxygen carriers, also known as the HBOCs, are able to combine with oxygen, just like haemoglobin in our normal red blood cells. So clinical trials are still ongoing with the um, HBOCs. And the biggest issue that they're finding is they're not protected by a cell membrane and therefore they're not protected from degradation. So they don't last for very long once they've been introduced to the body. So obviously, these are two examples of oxygen carriers and they're still constantly working um, in both of these fields as well as other fields in order to try to develop the most uh, appropriate, successful type of artificial blood. So on that, they're currently working on using stem cells to manufacture blood cells. So this is still very early in the production phase. Um, as it says, they're hoping to have uh, human volunteers in the next couple of years in Britain. And they hope to be able to uh, create artificial blood using stem cells that have been isolated from umbilical cords that's donated uh, by pregnant mothers after they've given birth. So cord blood donation is just as important as uh, a normal blood donation because the uh, umbilical cord contains these stem cells which then can be cultured in the laboratory to become a whole range of different cells. So in this case, they culture the cells with a, um, a growth medium rich in nutrients and factors that stimulate their differentiation into red blood cells. So stem cells are the very beginning of all the different cells in our body and uh, different genes are switched on and off in order to create the different types of cells. So in this case, they differentiate into the red blood cells and they're allowed to develop. Uh, and then as we can see, during the later stages of development of the red blood cells, the cells extrude their nuclei in preparation for the job of carrying oxygen around the body. So we know our red blood cells don't have a nucleus in order to fit more hemoglobin. And because there's no nucleus, they're unable to cause cancer. And lastly, the mature red blood cells that need to be made in their trillions if the technique has any practical value. Uh, so it's obviously still in its fairly early days, but they're hoping within the next couple of years that this will be a viable way of creating uh, artificial blood. And that's it for this video. Thank you.